Jian is the first featured 5 star to be released and if you are looking for a DPS with absolutely disgusting single target and AOD damage, his investment is definitely worth it. Jian is a broadblade wielding aero DPS whose main window of damage is during his ultimate, which means we want to spend most of his time only on field with his ultimate up. In this guide we will cover his skills, his best weapons, echoes, his best echo set, his best teams, his sequence notes and how to play him correctly. Let's go! Short preload, his kit can do a lot of different and cool stuff, however for an optimal rotation and DPS you will not use 90% of his kit. This honestly saddens me a bit, but it is what it is. However, we will still cover his full kit even if in a simplified way, though again most will not actually be used and covered in the rotation of this guide. His basic attacks are for the most part, well, basic attacks, however he has some unique heavy attack mechanics. Holding down the basic attack will start his heavy attack and holding it again will make him do windborne strike. This basically just sends you airborne while dealing some damage. Releasing the heavy attack will then have him cast abyssal slash. This means a possible aerial combo would be heavy attack into windborne strike, get airborne into abyssal slash, into plunge attack and using basic attack again after the plunge will have him cast a follow up on his plunge. You can also extend his combo by Banner of Triumph by pressing basic attack again. However, this combo is usually quite long and in a practical scenario you will most of the time not be able to actually do this. However, it does look cool though and if you enjoy playing him like this, go for it. His skill is a relatively simple dash dealing some damage. This can also be used mid-air. If you ever played Genshin, just think of Zhao. His Resonance Liberation costs 125 energy, has a 16 second cooldown and makes him enter King Long mode, I hope I pronounced that correctly, for 10 seconds, which transforms his basic attacks into Lance of King Long, which allows him to cast up to 3 consecutive attacks dealing heavy attack damage. Noteworthy is, the cooldown is started when he enters his ultimate, which means an effective 6 second cooldown, with 45% ER, Give or take a little bit, you can basically permanently ultimate. However, let's talk about that later. Around 65% of his total damage dealt comes from his ultimate. His fourth circuit mechanic is called Resolve. He can hold up to 60 Resolve in dealing damage with his basic attacks or intro skill will grant him a Resolve. Casting his skill or ultimate when he has 30 Resolve will enhance them, however you always want to prioritize using his ultimate over his skill for consuming Resolve. Note, while in his ultimate state his skill does no longer consume resolve and deals additional damage. A full basic attack string or a single intro skill will grant him 30 resolve, which is also what the calculations are based on. His intro skill is a plunge, which as I just said already gives him 30 resolve and does some damage to surrounding enemies. For the outro, if the next character coming in hits a target with a heavy attack, Jian will do a follow up for some medium damage up to twice within 8 seconds. His inherent skills, Heavenly Balance and Tempest Taming basically grant him a permanent 10% attack and 12% crit damage. Having covered what his kit does, and to be honest it sounds way more complicated than it actually is, especially if played for damage and not for looking cool, we can have a look at his skill priority. As seen on this pie, not that one, most of his damage comes from heavy attacks and since we don't really use many basic attack heavy attacks, this means his ultimate and fort. Hence, our skill priority is ultimate into fort and skill and basic and lastly the intro. Even though your basics will not be used much later on, at least until you have about 45% ER, you will certainly have to use them a lot more. And hence, they are not necessarily a bad investment. For his best echo set, this would be the 5-piece Sierra Gale. However, depending on your sub and main stats, going either 2-piece Yedda and 2-piece Lingering or 5-piece Lingering will only cost you around 7-16% to DPS. But again, this is given all sub and main stats would be the same, so especially doing a 2-piece 2-piece combination can be viable. Already speaking of it, let's talk about the Echoes. Going Monkey, this guy, for your Echo ability is the best choice as it will provide you with Aero Damage% percent and Heavy Attack% percent during your ultimate. Yes, the monkey's animation is quite long, but from testing it is actually worth it and technically speaking, as of the CBT2 at least, you can swap cancel the monkey and directly stretch him again. 
for your main stats, you want either crit rate or crit damage. Honestly, take whatever has the better substats, favoring crit rate. Double arrow damage percent on his 3 cost echoes is his best choice, however going for a mixed attack percent and arrow damage percent is fine as well, only losing out on around 4% DPS. But going double attack main stat instead is already a DPS loss of 11%. Again, given all other substats and main stats stay the same. Depending on how long you stay in with your other teammates, you might actually also need a little bit more than 45 ER, around 50 or 55%, which would require you to go for 1 ER% percent 3 cost. This would lower your total damage by around 14%, however in the team section later on, I will tell you a secret tech which will help you to not do that and go actually full damage. For the 1 cost echoes, going double attack percent is the right and honestly also only valid choice. For the substats, prioritizing crit rate and crit damage as well as attack percent will give you the highest raw damage. However, as I already touched on earlier, you will have a little bit of downtime that way on your ultimate. Depending on your team, your hands might want to look into getting some ER% percent rolls up to 45% in total to be able to basically have 100% uptime on your ultimate. At least considering the energy, the cooldown of 6 seconds will still exist even though you will practically never notice that as you want to switch characters during his downtime. This leaves the final substat priority as ER% percent until 45% into crit damage, crit rate, into attack percent. Reading his weapons, to no one's surprise, his best in slot is his signature, being ahead by around 20% compared to Lustrous Razor. However, R5 Autumn Trace is even up and technically just slightly better than the standard 5 star weapon. Autumn Trace R1 is his next best choice, but if you are starved on any resources, the 3 star weapon Guardian Broadblade can easily be r 5 and will perform slightly better than the craftable 4 star Broadblade number 41. Let's have a look at GN sequences. If you ever think about swiping your credit card ever for sequences, I do not recommend it, please stop wasting your money, GN is probably this one guy to invest into. Going from S0 to S6 will grant you a whopping 120% more damage, with his most notable sequences being his S3 and S6, which will just make you completely obliterate anything in your path, including the fun you have in this game. So be careful, but if you want to invest into him, he has really really good sequences. Now having all that covered, let's talk about his rotation. The best performing rotation is intro into echo into his ultimate which will then consume 30 resolve and trigger his fort into skill into 5 times lance of king long again that are his empowered basic attacks into basic attack 5 into skill into outro. However I know first of all this is a lot, secondly I want to emphasize again on two very important points. First this is what you could do in theory if you attack a target dummy. Bosses however are very active and aggressive and you will need to dodge and parry which will sometimes just change your actual rotation. Fortunately in Jian's case his dodge counter is also replaced by his ultimate skill which makes his burst uptime very consistent. However depending on how often you get hit and possibly staggered even though you have the anti-interruption resistance or how much you dodge you will maybe lose out on one or two lands of King Long during your ultimate. Secondly play however you want. I can only give you the rotation which looks the best on paper, if you don't enjoy playing that style and prefer to god forbid have fun in a video game, can you imagine, then please play as you would like to and however you enjoy. Before we look at his teams, I would highly appreciate a like and a comment on this video, let me know if you are pulling for Jian and his weapon or not. The YouTube algorithm sends his warmest regards to you if you do. For his probably best team around, Jian, Mortifi and Verena make up for a great combination. Verena alone will increase his damage dealt by around 23% and adding Mortifi will elevate his total damage dealt by 35%. If you happen to have your hands on an S6 Mortifi, you will get up to 43 more total damage. Keep in mind these numbers do not include any damage dealt by Verena or Mortifi themselves, this is solely from their buffs. Including their sets, Moonlit Clouds and Rejuvenating Glow, we end up at a total of 60% more damage. If you do not have Arena, Baiji is another good option, however her buff itself is not as valuable as the other options. However, better than none. 
as you certainly would like a healer who can trigger the Rejuvenating Glow's attack percent boost. Just keep in mind, her 15% all type damage buff would apply to Mortify, which is why she simply isn't as good as other options since her outfit kinda gets wasted. In her case, you would only swap her in once in a while to refresh her skill, then cycle between Mortify and Jian. If you do not have Mortify, Yang Yang would be another option. Yang Yang has a very short and solid rotation, however I will cover that exactly in my Yang Yang guide. She allows to generate 20 energy for Ji Yan, which in turn will help him run less energy regeneration and hence more damage in his kit. She can also use the Moonlit Cloud set and grant him hence at least a 22.5% attack buff as well. Also Yang Yang provides some grouping, which honestly is just nice to have. So now let's talk about the aforementioned hidden tech. The team comp would be Yang Yang, Mortify and Jian, that is right, no healer. But Yang Yang will take the place of your healer instead and become one herself. Using the Originate Type 2 weapon, she is able to trigger the 5-piece Rejuvenating Glow set every time she uses her ultimate, while still being able to give 20 energy to Jian. This would make the rotation for this team Yang Yang ult into her outro into Ji Yan intro directly switching again to Mortify, into Mortify ult into Mortify outro and back to Ji Yan. Now you can ult with Ji Yan and over this entire last 5 seconds where you switch between Ji Yan and Mortify, Ji Yan has gained those 20 energy from Yang Yang. If you are good at dodging, this team will provide you the second highest damage next to Verena in exchange for you not having healing. Well, except those 5% from Yang Yang's weapon, I guess. And that's only on her. So yeah, basically you don't have healing. But in any case, if you happen to have neither of those resonators, other options to pair him with are Tao Ki as a way to prevent you from one-shots, and she being able to self-heal to trigger the rejuvenating glow passive is great as well. You could also use S4 Rover as their sequence node 4 allows them to heal the team after casting ultimate, which is another way to trigger the rejuvenating glow set. That being said, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Peace.